Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Crypto Coach Celine. As a lot of you know now, uh, welcome, welcome. Wonderful to see everyone here uh, tonight to find out what is going on on the crypto scene. We're here every Sunday, six o'clock. We review the uh, news for the previous week and we look at, you know, ways uh, that we can navigate this uh, uh, roller coaster ride with cryptocurrency. So let's get started straight away. So um, I like to get started with the basics. Um, a lot of people are new to the cryptocurrency space. And so it can be difficult sometimes for some people to uh, grasp what it's all about. So here we have, we'll get started with the basics. We should know uh, that cryptocurrency is the money of the future. And we are here, the future is here, we're in the 21st century. Um, and so uh, we are now working with cryptocurrency and fiat currency is now uh, under threat. Uh, we can be assured that blockchain technology is the biggest disruption in our history. And uh, we are going to understand as well during the basic curve uh, uh, review of what it all is, is what is the blockchain. And so if you imagine lots of different computers all over around the world, you know, mining Bitcoin, and what that means is that they are confirming the transactions that are going on from peer to peer, from wallet to wallet, um, through the blockchain. Okay, and so uh, it's used to record these transactions, so it cannot be altered. Um, it's that's pure decentralization. And so it's very interesting to see the developments, what we're seeing uh, with attempts to regulate the space. Uh, when the very invention of uh, Bitcoin was to decentralize the, the influence of a group of small people, a small group of people, should I say, have over the influence of the flow of our money. Keep it simple. You know, cryptocurrency will do to banks what the emails uh, did to the postal service. I'm sure you can't remember the last time you wrote a letter and put it in the post. Well, um, I'm sure you remember the last time you sent an email. And so this is what's happening for the banking and financial system as a whole. Cryptocurrency is a game changer. So if you think of the evolution of exchangeable value, at the beginning, we started with gold, some precious metals, then we moved on to fake printing, uh, or a small group of people uh, determined that we should now use paper currency. And then wires came in, credit cards, online banking, and then transfers, online transfers. So this was a form of digital currency. So cryptocurrency is now this decentralized version of all that came before. Okay, so it's the next stage in the evolution of exchangeable value. If you think of gold, uh, it's a physical asset, it's limited by supply, it has to be mined, and as it gets harder to mine, the value goes up. And you can buy and sell gold for what we call fiat currency in the space. Fiat currency is your pounds, your dollars, your yen, or it can be kept in its current form. Well, Bitcoin is similar. It's not a physical asset, it's a digital asset. Uh, limited in supply, it has to be mined. Uh, it was uh, only ever 21 million uh, Bitcoins was ever created, can ever be created. And as it gets harder to mine, uh, the value goes up, which is what we have seen. Um, although today we're gonna have a lot of information about what's going on in the cryptocurrency market. I know there's quite a lot of pain out there, but don't worry. Uh, there is a sunny horizon not too far away. And so well, Bitcoin can be bought, sold and traded for fiat currency or it can be kept in its current form. And so these days, most people take Bitcoin because uh, not only directly, like we've seen with PayPal, with um, Tesla, you know, we've also seen with the Visa and MasterCard uh, giving you the up actual um, option of you spending your crypto using your uh, prepaid debit card. And you would have noticed if you've been out and about in your local region, the uh, Bitcoin ATMs, the number of Bitcoin ATMs have increased exponentially. And that means you can access your wallet uh, on the blockchain and withdraw cash 
uh, from your Bitcoin, your local Bitcoin ATM. And so they're going to get used to a number of uh, acronyms like altcoin. Or, uh, you know, in the beginning, there was Bitcoin. It was created in 2009 by an unknown person who, or people that went by the alias of Satoshi Nakamoto. And so soon after, because it was open source and you could copy the coding of the blockchain, uh, others came after. And they are called alternative coins or alt coins, okay? And so a good resource is CoinMarketCap and uh, CoinMarketCap.com. Uh, and it lists now, we've passed the 10,000 cryptocurrencies in the world. 10,000 cryptocurrencies, 10,009 cryptocurrencies across 381 exchanges, a market capitalization of $1.4 trillion. That's gone down over $1 trillion. Oh my goodness. And uh, a 24 hour trading volume of $156 trillion, uh, billion dollars, sorry, billion. And so, um, there you have it. Bitcoin's dominance is now beginning to slowly increase. We saw it drop down to a low of 40% of the market. It's now creeping back up, which means money is now flowing into Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum has also ticked up. So other coins, other alternative coins are seeing less of the market share and Ethereum and Bitcoin are dominating. Now, why is all this important? It's because the central banks are considering their own digital currency. They want their digital, digital currency to look like Bitcoin. And it's good news for all the early adopters of cryptocurrency. And remember, you know, when you adopt something that's new, you've got to hold on to it uh, for it to mature. OK, so all those old early adopters 10 years ago are smiling. And so Bitcoin may replace the dollar. They are having discussions about that. And they're also talking about Bitcoin. UK, they're, having, they're considering a new digital currency. And the Euro, the European Euro Union are going to launch their own central bank digital currency at the end of the year. Okay, so that is the basics. Uh, just know that if you're new to this space, uh, this is the place to be. It's the fastest growing sector in the world. Uh, everyone um, in business are, and industry are adopting blockchain technology. And we're going to see a lot of, uh, of that in action here. And so we like to go over the news every week. And of course, we get a bit of FUD. Uh, Bitcoin could become AOL of crypto aid, warns columnist. Uh, uh, Bloomberg's Tracy Alloway believes there's a parallel between crypto markets and the dot-com boom. Well, the dot-com boom were uh, guided by centralized uh, businesses, you know, and we're going to see a lot of this type of news. And for those people uh, out there that are new to this market, uh, be assured, we have seen this before, Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. That is what FUD stands for. So you're learning some of the acronyms that are common in the cryptocurrency space. Um, and that is when you start to see an overwhelming amount of fear mongering in the media, uncertainty about the future of cryptocurrency, and doubt about its credibility. And we're going to hear all of that as the markets are going down. And boy, are they tumbling. So where are we? in the psychology of the market cycle. Um, so this is really important because it's, it's known as the Wall Street, Wall Street cheats, cheat, cheat. <laughs> uh, I dare you to say that quickly when you've had a few. <laughs> and so where are we in the market? Where are we? I believe that this is a reflection of the mini cycle that we're in. Uh, we are in a market capitulation phase. We have gone past the euphoria and the and, and the thrill of getting in. That was, you know, in April, early April. And then, you know, it took a dive and then it started going up and complacency kicked in. And then as the market's going down, anxiety has kicked in and denial and now panic. Everyone is selling or are they? Well, in the news, about 80% of central banks are exploring CBDCs use cases. And that's uh, been reported by Bison Trials. 
you know, they're moving towards global implementation, guys. So this is happening. And they cited Facebook's DM as offering a whole new paradigm in economics a diverse association of enterprise and social impact stakeholders developing digital currencies on a permissioned on open source chain built with the most patent edge technology. So uh, watch out guys for Facebook's DM. Uh, California Bank could soon bring Bitcoin to its customers. Uh, Some press is in talk uh, with regulators to allow its customers to buy, hold and sell. Bitcoin um, and the CEO says that the pandemic has had an impact on the acceptance and migration to digital currencies. Wells Fargo, another major US bank, is set to offer a crypto fund to its rich clients. So imagine if the fear, uncertainty, and doubt kicks in, just remind yourself what the big boys are doing. Don't listen to what they're saying, listen to what, watch what they're doing. Another US bank is the uh, set. So, you know, Wells Fargo is not the first one. We've had JP Morgan, um, Bank of America, you know, I mean, it's just um, uh, uh, indictment on the crypto space. And so we also do like to look at the regulator news to see what's going on um, in terms of regulation. And where we heard last week Elon Musk talked, you know, tweeting about the um, uh, energy consumption of Bitcoin, uh, banking systems are found to consume two times more energy than Bitcoin. OK, and so Mike Novogratz, cryptocurrency firm Galaxy Digital, released a report on Friday entitled On Bitcoin's Energy Consumption and the study estimates that Bitcoin's annual Electricity consumption stands at 113.89 terawatts per hour. Um, and this amount is at least two times lower than the total energy consumed by the banking system, as well as the gold industry on an annual basis, according to their estimation. And so there's a bit of pushback um, uh, by the regulators. Uh, they want to uh, regulate Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. We have been here before. This is like deja vu. Uh, the Treasury Department are detailing a set of new tax compliance measures designed to bring in billions in new revenue uh, and crypto investors are the key target. And it, the report says that despite constituting a relatively small portion of business income today, cryptocurrency transactions are likely to rise in importance within the next decade, uh, especially in the presence of a broad-based financial account reporting regime. And so they're looking at the long term, the, over the 10-year, that very important 10-year period, and the agency says that the IRS also needs to significantly update its technology to properly, properly enforce the crypto economy. Does that mean that they're trying to monopolize the crypto economy and find a blockchain that works for them in the current way that fiat currency works for them? So we shall see. Uh, further non-compliance has been exacerbated by enhanced opportunities to shield income from tax liabilities and these opportunities are particularly available for those at the top end of income. Now this is the jazz that they like to play on people's minds okay because most of the top end of the income scale they all have trusts they all have businesses and everything goes through their business or their trust and so any tax implication will just really affect the little man the little people who don't know how to manage their financial wealth, okay? And last year, uh, the Treasury's detailed first, and they've now enforced this, where they've enforced uh, financial institutions in the United States have to report their when their customers receive spent or receive $10,000 or more in cryptocurrency. So we shall watch this space. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission have actually reported about the, 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 the cryptocurrency buzz. This is now this second uh, modern day uh, rise and buzz in cryptocurrency has driven record scam losses. Um, mem people 
have lost something in the region of $80 million in these scams since 2020, October 2020. And so we're going to look at some other news here because uh, who remembers OneCoin? Uh, OneCoin was a $4 billion Ponzi scheme, Ponzi scheme, and uh, the leader was found in default of the US lawsuit against her. She has disappeared since all of this, uh, uh, the, the brown stuff hit the, hit the fan, you know? And so um, she founded, uh, uh, she has been founded to have default, uh, been in default of this case. Uh, it's a four billion uh, scam cryptocurrency project. And so let's look at the detail. And what is very interesting is that the uh, brother, Ig Ignatova's brother, is actually assisting US authorities under a plea deal. And so we're going to watch this uh, case very closely. Uh, millions of people around the world lost money uh, on this scheme. And so those of you that were in the crypto space back in 2018 will know what signs to look for next time, guys. Uh, the Bitcoin plunged 30 percent. It was actually 50 percent at its peak. Uh, it recovered to 38. I think round about now it's around 33,000. Um, it's revisiting those bottoms. We're going to have a look at the chart. Uh, the cryptocurrency hasn't traded that level since late January. And so uh, it rebounded, uh, but it's, it's, it's failed to hold uh, those highs. And so the sharp drop means that it has temporarily erased all its gains uh, following Tesla's announcement it will purchase 1.5 billion worth of cryptocurrency. And so it's also down 50% since hitting the record high of $64,000. And so on the dark side, the hackers' Bitcoins are being tracked. Uh, they may not uh, be able to even benefit from their stolen, uh, ill-gotten gains um, because ran uh, ransom um uh where is watching them okay so uh blockchain sleuthing firm in fact called crystal blockchain has said that it locates uh bitcoin uh, address that the dark side hackers used to collect ransom from the colonial pipeline and shared it with coinbest so uh coinbest are running this story um, unlike in traditional finance with public blockchains, every transaction leaves a trace. So every scammer uh, that, that scammed anybody, you know, do uh, follow it up because you know they the, you can trace the, the whereabouts and the of the uh, stolen cryptocurrency and possibly get your money back. And so. Um, it's been reported that Colonial Pipeline agreed to pay 75 Bitcoin, that's $5 million at the time of that report, uh, to the attackers and soon was able to resume work. So they paid the ransom, guys. Uh, you know, crypto custody firm Fireblocks has handled more than $500 billion in assets. What does that mean? That means that we are seeing a rise rise in popularity in cryptocurrency despite the drop. Uh, you know, um, this firm Fireblocks, they said in January they were doing around 60 billion settlements per month. Now they're doing $124 billion uh, and that's just in the past 30 days. So understand that we are in a bull season. This is a big correction but we are coming back up. Altcoin suffered more than Bitcoin uh, during this $350 billion wipeout of the crypto market. And so BlockFi has botched promotion with an outside Bitcoin reward payment. Imagine you log into your crypto wallet and all of a sudden you see 700 uh, Bitcoin there. You know, uh, BlockFi says some clients who participated in the March trading promotion may see an inaccurate bonus payment displayed in their transaction history. Our team is working on the fix and the proper amounts will be reflected shortly. So they had to basically contact everyone that received the, the missed uh, uh, 
uh, uh, spent Bitcoin, you know, and some of the, their customers had already moved their Bitcoin to a private wallet or a cold wallet, you know, and um, uh, they are suing, they are threatening legal action on their customers if they don't return the Bitcoin. And, you know, some of these guys, they received over 700 Bitcoin. Imagine if you got that in your wallet, you got a ping, a notification, you've received 700 Bitcoin. What would you do? You know, uh, a lot of people, you know, return the money, especially after the threat of legal action. <laughs> you know, but very interesting. Uh, you know, it ranges from five Bitcoin, one Bitcoin, very, very interesting space. And so the, these entities are buying Bitcoin during this, little uh, mini crash, I call it, uh, analysts uh, uh, follow uh, these um, uh, signals on the on-chain uh, platform. They say that uh, when the Bitcoin crashed, uh, it crashed from 43,000 to 30,000, it came from short-term holders. And by age, uh, they saw a large tick uptick in selling from coins aged one week to one month. So those people that got in late, they are the ones that are selling. And interestingly enough, it's the Bitcoin whales that are selling. So people, the little, little people, uh, they are learning um, how to play the crypto market game, okay? And so uh, by size, they saw uh, most selling was from entities with at or over 100,000 Bitcoin. And this cohort was reduced by 89,000 Bitcoin. And so that's very interesting. And as for the buyers, uh, we saw an uptick in buying. Uh, there were people, a different type of uh, uh, long uh, uh, investors that were buying up this Bitcoin as it was crashing, okay? And so we'll hear a lot about golden hands. So let's listen, take a look at DeFi, decentralized finance is the fastest growing subsector. Uh, and it is coming for the banks and FinTech. And so the banks are going to see that it's actually decentralized finance that is their biggest threat, not cryptocurrency uh, or Bitcoin, but DeFi, decentralized finance. And this is uh, what they say, you know, let me be clear with all the fintechs and banks, which I am in every call I have with them, this isn't going away. This is the internet coming for a big part of your business. If you are a bank, if you're a fintech, I would strongly recommend that you ask yourself when and why users will want to use decentralized financial products. Uh, here's one answer. A bank can give them 1%. On Aave, they can get 8%. And that's the only reason they're not on Aave is because they don't know how to get on Aave. Yes, the banking system are lagging behind. And so what do we have on the NFT news? We have another uh, uh, event where Charlie bit my finger was the, which is the most, I personally haven't watched this uh, viral video, but it had over 880 million views um, and it was uh, first aired 14 years ago um, uh, on the anniversary was yesterday. And so they are celebrating the anniversary by removing, deleting the video and turning it into an NFT. Yes, and they expect a lot of interest for that. So we're down, we're down to $1.4 trillion. That's the market capitalization right now for the entire cryptocurrency market. Uh, now, there was a lot of interest. I got loads of people speaking to me about Shiba Inu. And let's have a look at what it is. And so during the week, uh, the Ethereum creator, Vitalik uh, Buterin, uh, he burnt $6 billion in Shiba tokens. He said he doesn't want the power. Uh, he was gifted uh, all of these uh, Shiba tokens, so he's burnt 90% of that by sending it to a dead blockchain address late on Sunday, taking them out of circulation. And he said he's going to give the remaining amount to charity. Okay, so he hasn't decided what charity 
yet, uh, but uh, Butrin gave 50 trillion shape coins to an India uh, COVID-19 relief fund uh, just the other week. And so there's a lot of liquidity. So let's take a look at Shiba. Wow. You know, I heard a lot of people, you know, getting asking me around here, around here, what about Shiba, Shiba, Shiba? And look where we are. I know the whole market is down. But, you know, when you find out about these new coins, you must use caution and understand what, st what stage of the cycle we're in. If we look um, on the long term, uh, we can see uh, that uh, uh, long term, we are looking at a bit of a raise, but you see the first, we're all the way down here. We're all the way down here. Um, at the, beneath the 0 0.236 uh, Fibonacci uh, resistance level. So we need to break out of this level here to get excited about Shiba. Um, uh, and if it does, based on its opening price, where you can see it just tanked and uh, just been on the downers ever since, um, you can see that it could get up to 0 0.002 cents. You know, so there is a potential, but it can be very risky. You know, uh, Polkadot. Now, Polkadot is a very interesting project. Uh, banking app currently picks Polkadot for its DeFi debut. So the banks are now paying attention and they are now entering into this space. Uh, the financial uh, services app said on Tuesday will integrate Akala with Polkadot uh, based decentralized platform. Okay, uh, so it's taking its first steps towards doing that. And Polkadot is basically uh, one of the most robust platforms and it, is, uh, in it gives you true interoperability. In other words, you can, as a developer, you know, attach your blockchain to Polkadot and you can transact. It, it's actually got uh, economic and transactional scalability where you can, deal with multiple uh, tr um, cryptocurrencies and tokens across different uh, blockchains. Um, and so it is very inno innovative and it's the most exciting project that we can see out there. You know, um, it's not just about tokens uh, to be transferred across uh, blockchains. It's about it's the true multi-chain application environment. Okay, and uh, watch this space. You will hear a lot about Polkadot. But oh my goodness, what a drop! Look at what we can see. Uh, Polkadot has been doing on the on the price front. Um, you know, reaching a high of about fifty dollars. We're now at uh, sixteen dollars, uh, and uh, it's an interesting drop, uh, even though it is quite steep and scary. Uh, for those of you that have Dot, I can imagine uh, you must be. Uh, if you didn't get in in January um, you, you, and you got in anywhere near here, then you will be quite nervous. Uh, but rest assured, we can see it's dropped, it's stopped. It's dropped just on the 78.6 Fibonacci support uh, level. And so we should see a bit of upside now after this big movement on the market. And with Cardano, the creator actually is advising Elon Musk on how to fix Dogecoin. And he says, you know, if, if he's serious, if he's really serious about Dogecoin, he should get his team of developers to look into a number of research papers uh, that will help rebuild Dogecoin. And he says in a very, you know, nonchalant way. So there you go, just a few easy steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> and you're off to the races. So you should watch this space on Dogecoin and see if Elon Musk is going to be the true Doge daddy. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Cardano is making the world work better for all. We have seen uh, the blockchain platform change innovation in terms of uh, systems that we have, uh, scientific systems or voting governing systems, you know, and enterprise systems around the world. And so do take a look at the project and see what it's all about. And so have we have, here we have Ada uh, has taken a, a significant drop. Let's look at the uh, percentages. You can see here on the bigger picture, 
if we do uh, uh, hope, we can see uh, that uh, it's going to top out at $6. Uh, but at the moment, we're currently at the $1 mark uh, with Ripple. Um, we are seeing with Ripple a big correction, uh, although the holders have petitioned SEC uh, to end the lawsuit, you know, uh, that has been brought against Ripple. Um, so they have successfully obtained 30,000 signatures requesting that the SEC drop this lawsuit against Ripple. And so we should watch this case because it's really important for the crypto space that they drop this lawsuit. And so uh, they have urged the SEC to end the Ripple lawsuit and stop the SEC from making up cryptocurrency rules through lawsuits in place of writing these rules properly with public input and partnership with the US Congress. Well, we shall say no more on that. And so the request has been uh, heard and filed and succeeded. So they've passed everything that is required in, in terms of law. We wait to see what happens on that space. Ripple is decentralized and it's the bankers' favorites. They have banking clients already on their uh, Ripple net. And so you can see uh, this is quite a big drop as well uh, that we see at the um, 78.6 replacement level. That is a very important level, okay? And so when you're analyzing the chart, uh, know that if it ha does succeed to bounce, and you know, I had a few charts on my um, uh, different uh, shots that is not loading properly yet, you know, so apologies for that. But you can see that it's just bounced off the 78.6 replacement level. And I, this actually from the top to the bottom represents some 65% drop. But although if you did get in here, get in uh, January, uh, you would have seen 1,100% uh, appreciation. Okay. And so if we look at the long term, we can see Ripple um, possibly peaking out of 14 uh, dollars and Odua coin, our favorite uh, African coin, uh, our decentralized uh, uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency is live. Uh, the update is live. Uh, do tune in. Um, oh, yes, or oh, it's a mandatory update, by the way. Um, it was, uh, we went live on the 14th of May. So if you are mining and haven't updated your wallet, do make sure you do. Uh, we have the Odua Masterclass every Thursday at 8.30 uh, p.m. So do join me live and look out for the link. And so with Bitcoin, what is happening? 56% of Australians think Elon Musk invented Bitcoin. No, you could have been further from the truth. Uh, and it's quite incredible. Uh, but uh, we have that uh, finding of a survey that was conducted by Finder. 25% of Aussies will either own or plan to own cryptocurrency, but 20% don't know how to buy. Uh, and remarkably, 56 believe that Tesla chief executive Elon Musk invented Bitcoin. <laughs> and so it's always good to get ed educated on these things, guys. Um, and as Newbies, newbies do not panic. Uh, we're talking about the whales, by the way, because as we saw, you know, it's the whales, uh, the newbie whales that are coming in with big bucks and they're leaving with their slightly lesser than <laughs> big bucks. And so uh, they're panicking in the latest correction, old pros appear to be buying the dip. Yes, when the price goes down, buy some more. Um, and so Bitcoin market is in a historically significant correction, uh, but these are strong signals that short-term holders are le leading with the panic uh, sale. And so you can see that what we saw earlier is new people and new wells. And so Elon Musk has got diamond hands. You know, what do you know? After saying he's not going to offer, um, accept rather Bitcoin for his purchases, he's now, saying that they have no plans to sell Bitcoin. And that's another terminology you will find in the crypto space, diamond hands. It means that you have no intention of selling. 
And there is his diamond hand tweak that really did pick up the market for a little bit, but uh, it kind of ended shortly after, as we saw here with the chart action. And I'm not sure if I can get my Fibonacci up. There we are. And so we can see uh, in the long term, rather, if you do look at the daily chart um, and map it out from this recent correction, you will see that estimates are coming to uh, 85,000. Um, on the weekly, it's uh, um, uh, 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 75,000. Uh, but uh, that would represent from this current position a 160% increase. And so, where are we going? What's going on? What part of the cycle are we? Are we hearing a capitulation, do you think? Or are we here in the belief or the thrill stage or the optimism or hope? Okay, we could be all the way at the bottom here. We could have had a flash depression, <laughs> you know, so let's wait and see what the market is going to be like. So back to basics very quickly. Um, everyone that is involved in cryptocurrency should know the difference between a custodial and non-custodial wallet. A custodial wallet is centralized, meaning that, you, that uh, someone else holds the secret key to your wallet um, and the cryptocurrency is always accessible by their servers, okay? Um, a non-custodial wallet is decentralized. And that's why we recommend you have all your savings in decentralized wallets rather than on exchanges where they can be seized and withheld. And uh, if you uh, lose your, your, your backup key, you know, for a custodial wallet, that's probably the only positive there are other alternatives, but, you know, uh, with a non-custodial wallet, you are your own bank, truly, and you are the only one with the keys, so never lose those keys. Um, you will get used to downloading wallets uh, onto your phone, um, and you will accumulate these apps, so do make sure you upgrade to a new phone uh, that will be able to handle all of the memory. And so Coinbase, CryptoPay, these are good exchanges where you can buy and sell your cryptocurrency. Coinbase is quite expensive. CryptoPay is my favorite. It's a European based uh, uh, exchange. So it's escaped uh, some of the uh, issues that are facing some other exchanges right now. Uh, coin payments is also very good for exchanging cryptocurrency. Um, you can also uh, buy and sell and exchange on Binance. And so with all of these, you will need to verify your e-wallet, do your verification. They will ask you for a passport or driver's license. It's easier with your driver's license to take the picture. And uh, once you register with the link, you download your app and take uh, to complete the verification using your mobile phone app. And so once you're verified, you can now link your debit card and your bank account and you're good to go. Now, I know if it's uh, confusing and um, hard to follow, you can get help out there. There is help. You can book your one-to-one e-wallet masterclass with Crypto Celine. And so what does all this mean? It's confusing. I don't know. It's complicated. Uh, there's scams everywhere. You might fall for a scam and it's high risk. Um, and so that's why a lot of people uh, seem to you know, lose with cryptocurrency in the same way they lose with the Forex market. You know? And so what it means is that you can get more help from London Crypto Network. We can help you navigate that. Uh, field with your one-to-one e-wallet masterclass. So do book your one-to-one e-wallet and you will get uh, free e-wallet coaching, one-to-one -one coaching session. Uh, you will get help growing your crypto portfolio. So all you need to do is choose how you want to get started. So are you ready to get started? I hope you're less confused about cryptocurrency. Uh, we will help you get started now. And so let me just have a look at uh, uh, what uh, 
type of people we have. Uh, do we have any newbies in the house? Any newbies, just put one in the chat. If you are new, if you are uh, experienced and you want to learn more, put two in the chat. If you are uh, an expert, then do put number three in the chat. So that's number one for newbies, number two for intermediaries, and number three for experts. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So well, let me just see, we have an intermediary. Well done, Honoreen. Oh, and we have a newbie. Welcome, Mackie, welcome. So um, what we do is we help people uh, get started with cryptocurrency, understand what it is, and uh, get some Bitcoin. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, uh, LondonCryptoNetwork.com, or at, at LCN underscore B free. So do subscribe and follow me. And on that note, we've come to the end of our uh, packed session. Wow, what a week. Um, we are still, you know, uh, riding the roller coaster of cryptocurrency. Um, we, we can see how volatile that can be. Um, and so that's why uh, it's important to help others guide them through the process so that uh, they don't get burnt as much. <laughs> and so be free with Crypto Celine. It's an acronym I created uh, in 2018 when I started London Crypto Network. Uh, it stands for Be Economically Empowered with Financial Residuals and Eternal Earnings. Be free with Crypto Celine. So well done everyone for making this call. Uh, please do feel free to, to unmute your mic if you have um, any questions or you have any comments, do feel free to unmute your mic. And then while you're uh, doing that, I'm going to post the link in the chat uh, for newbies to book their one-to-one -one e wallet session. Uh, you just uh, use the link and select a date that works for you. And then that will be your, the beginning of your journey into cryptocurrency space and know that you'll be earning while you learn. Okay. So it looks like I've really done a good job of explaining what's happening in the market and what's uh, going on with Bitcoin, you know. Does anyone have any comments? If not, we will go uh, to the next slide so that we can, we can close. And so thank you very much for coming, everyone. Uh, we're here every Sunday at six o'clock uh, to be free, be economically empowered with financial residuals and eternal earnings. See you next Sunday, six o'clock sharp. Good night, guys.